Hello YouTube, this is You Can Do It Dave. As you may know by the fact that I built a six foot diameter cat wheel in the background there, I have a couple of furry friends running around here. And since I've demolished half of my house, they don't really have a lot of room to run around. Now in the picture here you can see my uh, cat tree that I built long time ago. I managed to get a hold of some uh, small round cardboard barrels from a food processing plant. Okay, so all I did was wrap them in uh, carpet. You can see the top one there. Um, on the inside there's a, a one by two piece of wood and I just stapled the carpet to that. Now normally I have that seam on the other side where the cats can't reach it. Uh, there is a potential for the, the carpet stringing and you don't want to choke your cats on it. Okay. Um, I usually uh, burn it off with a blowtorch and that solves that problem. Since the cats don't have a lot of room to run around and they're driving me nuts, um, I am going to upgrade my cat tree. Okay, now if you have any furry friends, I would strongly recommend getting a cat tree. Okay, when I first got these two Siamese cats, they would be scratching the couch, they'd be scratching the bed, and what you do is you give them a little tap on the head and just throw them at the cat, cat tree okay and they'll automatically just latch onto it and then you pet them on the head and good good girl good girl good boy good boy and it's pretty quick that that is their area okay and I have not had any problems with scratching the bed scratching the couch they when they want to scratch their claws they go to that okay I strongly recommend making one of these for your kitty cats if you have one and all it is is a bunch of barrels wrapped in carpet with some plywood shelves and they love it. So what I am doing is I have, I'm, I'm switching to a 60 gallon drum. Okay. And uh, the idea is that you cut, you cut a kitty cat sized hole in the bottom of it. Okay. Then you get your 3D printer going. And what I've done is I've 3D printed a base and a post. And you stack the posts like so. These are the shelves that I 3D printed. Um, now I use a program called Mesh Mixer and uh, Cura is my slicer. So those are the two programs I use, Mesh Mixer and Cura. And I've sized them to fit inside the barrel. So one will go here. One will go here, one will go here, one will go here, okay, and basically it will give somewhere for the cats to run around inside the barrel. Um, so that is what we're going to be doing today. I still have to, I still have to 3D print one po another post. So yeah, let's begin. So looking down inside the barrel. The first thing we have to do is make sure that we do not damage our floor that we're standing on. So what, what, I, what I'll do is I will take the lid of the barrel, okay, and I'll set it underneath. So any screwing, any screwing that we do down through the bottom of that barrel, it won't go into the floor. It'll go into the lid. So that's the first step. Um, put the opening towards you. Okay. Now we have to figure out where the center of that bottom is. Now I 3D printed these to fit inside the barrel. So if we put them inside the barrel, like that then we put now the uh, the base unit and the base post go together okay so we can set that down in there Thank you. 
So now that now we know that it's centered. Okay. So we can drill the holes in the corner and put in our our screws. Now to attach the uh, to attach the base to the bottom of the barrel, um, I've got these bolts, nuts and bolts, and they're going to stick up through the bottom of the barrel like that. Okay, and then the bolt the nuts will be on the inside. So you have to size your bit accordingly to fit those bolts. Okay. So I'm going to uh, move the camera out of the way and drill the holes, and we'll see what we come, can come up with. Okay, so with the base plate, hopefully mounted in the center, <laughs> okay, um, it's time to start installing the posts and the decking. Now, with 3D printing, it's just plastic, okay, and the, one of the mistakes I made so far was I made that base plate too small, okay, so with the, with the post on it, um, I couldn't really, I had to drill in at an angle to get the bolts in, okay? So if you're going, if anyone out there is going to be doing this with a 3D printer, um, make that base plate bigger so you have room to drill straight, straight through, okay? That's, so far that's the only thing is. Now, um, to fix that problem, I just heated up the plastic and melted the corners here so it will fit, it will still fit with the bolts in there. Okay, so uh, let's get the posts installed and we'll see what it looks like from there. So one goes there. That little support lip goes there. And then that little support lip goes there. Okay, so now pretty good. With the center post installed, um, now it's time to install the platforms. And I think what I will do is I will rest this part on the post support, which is down there, and I will find something, cereal boxes, cardboard boxes, whatever, that will level that in the barrel to support it. Then I can drill through it, drill the screws in from the other side. Okay. Once you get the holes drilled, you can take your, your screwdriver and you can power drive it in. Okay, so after drilling four holes and attaching the base, I put in two, two posts. Okay, put it stood up two posts. The first, the first lip is going that way. I screwed in the center hole first, bolted it into place, and then attached the two outer ones, and then attached the, the center one to the post. So the, the, first, the first one is now installed. So now we can go ahead and do the second one. And again, I need to find something that's high enough that will support, that will support the, the tray as I'm, as I'm installing it. Okay. So let's go have a look and see what I can find. So with the second shelf installed, it's time to put in another post. Now I just I just finished 3D printing this. Okay, and it will go so I have this support sticking this way. So this one will stick that way. So when the cats climb up, it'll be one, two, three, four. Okay. So the last post has been printed, and you'll notice that there is a center pin on top. Okay, and so we have one support going this way, the last one. So we'll put this one that way, and that center post is there for the lid. So when we put the lid on, we can just take that center post so now that post is anchored. You have each shelf is holding it in place, plus at the top it's anchored. So it's, it's going to be a nice solid thing for the cats to run up on. 
So I have to reprint the uh, the last shelf. Unfortunately, this this one I printed here. It uh, it does not have the brackets to screw it on. So unfortunately, I cannot use this one. So I got to reprint it. While I am waiting for the final 3D tray to be printed, and I can finish putting in the, the fourth level, I would like to mention that I realize not everyone has a 3D printer. Okay, uh, this one here has a bed size of 12 inches by 12 inches by 18 inches, I believe. So it's a fairly large one. I did purchase this 3D printer specifically for the dragon head door knocker that I'm going to be mounting on the front of my Hobbit home. This was purchased for a specific project. And now that I have it, well, I'm using it for whatever projects I can find use for. Okay, so yes, I do realize that not everyone has access to a 3D printer. But I thought I would share this project with you and let you know just the kind of stuff that you're capable of doing. Okay, so with the uh, with the last shelf in place, we can take out our supports. Be sure to use something small enough that you can fit through the cat door at the bottom. <laughs> After going to the local carpet store, and getting some nice furry carpet for them to uh, play on okay uh, I'm gonna try something different with attaching the carpet to the barrel um, the smaller cat tree that I showed you worked out pretty good by just wrapping it around and stapling it on the seam but this is a much larger barrel so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna take my staple gun Push it right into the carpet and send the staple right through. Okay, and if you look on the inside here, you'll notice the staples all the way down the inside. So I'm just going to pull them tight, pull them in, in as far as they go, and then just fold them over. Just like that. Okay, so with the, uh, with the barrel all covered in carpet, Okay, um, you remember that shelf I made that I couldn't use because it had no mounting brackets? Well, I can use that as a template to put carpet on the shelves. So now what I can do is I can trace that. Okay, so we have our four carpets for inside the barrel. Now, to keep the uh, cats from choking on this stuff, like that, I usually take a heat source and just melt it together. Okay, that way 
it's a melted it's a melted mass of plastic okay and it won't it won't choke the cat okay so here is the safety message for the day okay um, using these lighters um, I just get them at the dollar store okay and yeah it does a great job of melting the carpet back so that the cats won't choke on it safety message for the day these lighters are not meant for prolonged use okay it gets hot um, so take your time let it cool down in between burns or else it might actually go boom I don't know I don't know if it's rated for a full time use until it's empty I do not know so that is the safety message don't blow yourself up <laughs> okay um, but yeah it's great for melting the carpet back okay don't catch yourself on fire don't burn your house down make sure that any flames are out before you walk away okay that is the safety message when playing with fire be very careful Okay, so uh, while you're um, cleaning up the fibers, make sure that you don't leave any lying around for your cats to play with. That will, that's pretty tough stuff. I can see that wrapping around their intestines and causing some major issues. So make sure, I don't, my cats aren't really paying attention to these little fluffy bits, but they really love the strings and that could, that could do some serious damage. So last thing to do, is the doorway now through the magic of photo editing I'm getting this done fairly quickly um, but you have to remember let your light let the uh, heat source cool down in between burns if you're going to use something like this um, if you just use a regular blowtorch remember that you don't want too much heat this is just enough to singe the carpet and melt it into a lump. If you use too much heat, it might actually catch fire on you. So you gotta be careful with that. See now right there, it caught fire. Melted plastic will burn. Okay, that's why I'm that's why I'm beating on it like that. Okay, melted plastic will burn. So if you let it get away from you, yeah. So be very careful if you're going to use this technique. Um, you don't want to get it too hot. That is the safety message for the day. When you're playing with fire, be very careful. So with the outside of the barrel lined with carpet, it's time to put the carpet on each individual shelf. Okay, now um, I've had to trim it off just a little bit because it's a little pointed, but something like that will do it. Okay. So. So the next thing on the list is to uh, take your carpet triangles and using construction adhesive, attach them to the decks. centered
So now what I'll do is I will use the piece that I couldn't use to begin with as a press. And that's pressed in there now. Okay, so I'll take the weight. And I'll put the weight on there. So then I can come down here and do the same thing. I'll press it into place. give it a good squeeze. Let that sit for a minute. Then what I'll do is I will take that off, put some weight on that one, and squeeze that one. So Basically, I'm pressing them together really good and then hoping that the weight will keep it there. So the next step in this process, um, there is a filament that you can get for the 3D printer that is called TPU and it's a fairly flexible material. Okay, so I printed up these uh, bolt, bolt covers so that these sharp little edges would be covered up. And what you do is you just put them on there and screw them on. Yeah. Just like that. So I'll install these all the way down to the bottom of the barrel and that way uh, those sharp little edges will be covered. What do you want? Yeah. Well, that's really nice. Wobble the camera around. So to give you an idea about a, this, this material called TPU, okay, um, I have this flashlight where the button is always coming on by itself. So I printed this TPU cover that slides over the flashlight and protects the button. Okay, well this is made out of TPU and you can do that with TPU. It's a flexible, rubbery material that's great for friction fit items like screw covers. Okay, so with the, uh, with the screw covers now in place, this project is almost, this, this, this bottom barrel is almost done. Um, well, the only thing I have left to do is to cut the hole in the top for the cats to be able to, to exit the barrel. Um, yeah, it's the, uh, the other two barrels will have to wait until I have the headroom in the new house. Um, the center span for the new house will be 10 feet, so I should be able to fit three of these barrels easily, on one on top of the other, 
and have one continuous spiral of staircases all the way up to the roof. So the hole has been cut out for the kitty cats and as you can see it's a nice straight shot down into the barrel. So now I got to uh, put it in with the other cat tree and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so after putting in the hole in the top of the drum, capping the screws, and putting the top on the barrel, I incorporated it into the original cat tree. Now you can see the difference in size compared to the two, so it's quite a bit bigger. Um, so we'll have to see how the kitty cats like it. They'll be able to scratch on the outside plus run around the inside. And once I get the new Hobbit home built, I'll be able to add two more layers to that of the large barrels and we'll see how it goes. So this is You Can Do It Dave and we'll see you next time.